Hello all and welcome to session 41 of Direct Tax 2, fourth semester BCom of Mangalore University. Now in this particular session, we are going to begin with the last head of income, the last chapter that is income from other sources. And in this session, we are going to discuss about incomes chargeable under the head other sources. Now, first of all, why is this heading called as income from other sources? We have all incomes which are taxable, but if they do not fall under any other head of income, say salary, say house property, say business or profession income or capital gain, such an income will come under the heading income from other sources. And because of this reason, this heading is also called as residual income. So incomes which are taxable, but do not fall under any other head of income, other four heads, salary, house property, business or profession income or other sources, then such incomes are shown under the head income from other sources. And that's why this heading is also called as residual income. Now, which are the incomes which are chargeable under the head other sources? Dividend from foreign companies. Point to note, for the previous year, 1920, dividend from Indian companies is exempt. But dividend from foreign companies is taxable. Interest income, including interest on securities and other interest. Other interest would mean interest on savings bank account interest on recurring deposit account or interest on any other company deposits for that matter. So interest income is taxable. Next, we have casual income. Casual income are lottery winning price, crossword puzzles, card games, gambling or betting, races including horse race. It can be horse race, it can be camel race, it can be dog race as well. So these incomes, if earned, are treated as casual income and such casual incomes are subject to, to a TDS, tax deducted at source rate at 30%. So casual income is always deductible with TDS at 30%. Then any sum received by an SSE from his employers as contribution to any provident fund or superannuation fund or any fund set up under the ESI, Employee State Insurance Act 1948, or any other fund for the welfare of such employees. So if the SSE is receiving from the employers as contribution, that will not be taken as salary income, rather it will be considered as uh, other sources income. Then income from machinery, plant or furniture belonging to the SSE and let out on hire, if the income is not chargeable to tax under business income. Take for example, Shamiana business. They have, they are Shamiana, they have chairs, they have other furniture, they have, uh, what do you say, fans, they have lights, furnitures and fittings they have. Now these machinery, this furniture would require some repairs. So uh, first of all, any incomes that they are earning from uh, machinery plant or furniture, and if this is not shown under the head business income, those incomes will be shown under the head profit, uh, under the head income from other sources. Then income received under a key man insurance policy, including bonus. Now, what do you mean by a key man insurance policy? If the employer pays for the insurance on only a few key employees, important personnel in the organization, and not all the employees, and if such key employees may be on retirement or on the maturity of the insurance policy, if they are receiving money from the insurance company, including bonus, then such amount is taxable under other sources. But if the company or business has paid insurance on the lives of all the employees, all the employees, then whatever they receive on the maturity of the policy is not taxable in the hands of such employees. But since this is a key man insurance policy, policy taken on the lives of key important employees only, and any amount received by them on the maturity of the policy will be taxable under the head other sources if it is not taxable under their profits and gains from business or profession or salaries. Then interest received on unrecognized provident fund 
on employee's contribution. So employee has continued to contribute, but that provident fund is unrecognized. It doesn't have the recognition from the chief commissioner of income tax. So such a provident fund will become unrecognized provident fund and any interest derived from such URPF, unrecognized provident fund, interest is taxable under the head, other sources. Then we have interest on bank deposits, savings bank. Then we have RD account. Then interest on any loan advanced. If the SSE has advanced any loan to friend or anyone, and if he's charging interest, that interest will be taxable under the head, other sources. Then we have salary of member of parliament, member of legislative assembly or member of legislative council. So salary of an MP, MLA or MLC is taxable under the head, other sources. Sometimes income from undisclosed sources such as cash credits, investments, money, expenditure, which is unexplained. If these are not shown as business income, then definitely this such incomes will be shown under the head, other sources. These are called as unexplained money, unexplained cash credit, unexplained expenditure, unexplained uh, investments. These are from undisclosed source. So it will be taxable under the head other sources if it is not shown under the head business income. Then rent received from subletting a house. In the chapter house property we had discussed, the income from house property is taken only if the SSE is the owner of the house property. But if I have given my house on rent, whatever rental income I derive, that will be taxable under the head house property. But if my tenant is subletting a portion or the entire house property, then in the hands of the tenant, the income received by subletting is taxable under the head other sources because the tenant is not the owner of the property. So rent received from subletting a house is shown under the head other sources because subletting is done by a tenant who is not the owner of the house property. Then income by way of royalty, director's fees, commission or remuneration. So if an SSE is receiving royalty income, maybe for writing a book, royalty income received say from a publisher, then company in a company, the directors are receiving their fees or if there is any commission, say insurance commission or any remuneration that will be taxable under the head other sources. Then rent of land not appurtenant to any building. We have seen this under the head house property, I had given an example that I own a piece of land, exclusive piece of land. There is no structure very close to the temple. And there is a temple fair, temple jatre as we call. And suppose if the temple is taking our land on rent, thereafter the temple will mark that land and give it for, you know, the small business traders who will be there, uh, you know, exhibiting and selling their products maybe for 10 days of the festival or 12 days of the festival. So rental income that we derive from that land exclusively, temple is going to pay us the rent because we are the owner of that land. So such income will be taken as other sources income because this is rent of land not connected to, not annexed to, not pertinent to any building. Then Agriculture income from a land situated outside India. We know very clearly agriculture income from a land situated in India is exempt under section 10, subsection 1. So agriculture income from a land situated outside India. Maybe we have agriculture income, say, from Sri Lanka, say, from Bangladesh, say, from Pakistan, from Bhutan, from Nepal, or any other country other than India. Agriculture income received will be taxable. Then income from fisheries. Ferry mark, ferries, markets, etc. is shown under the head, other sources. Then any sum received without consideration, that is gift by an individual or HUF from any person or persons exceeding rupees 50,000 in aggregate. So if the gift amount exceeds rupees 50,000, entire amount is taxable. Point to be noted, gift received from relatives on any occasion gift received from anyone on the occasion of marriage is fully exempt from tax. So gift received from relatives on any occasion and gift received from any person on marriage is totally exempt from tax. But gift received from friends or any other person 
and if the aggregate value of gifts exceeds rupees 50000 the entire amount will be taxable if the gift amount is exactly 50000 or less than that nothing is taxable that's a very important point that we have to understand relating to the gift then any remuneration received for writing articles in journals for doing examination work for delivering guest lectures tips received by a waiter or taxi driver all these are covered under the head income from other sources then as far as cricketers are concerned amount received by the cricketers by playing test matches in india up to 75% is exempt that means 25% is taxable and it is shown under the head other sources if they are playing any other matches let's say for example they are playing one day international matches or a t20 international matches the amount received for playing such matches are exempt totally exempt 100% exempt and if any cricketers are playing or representing the country by any matches outside india 50% is exempt and the remaining 50% would be taxable so that's all in this particular session pertaining to incomes which are taxable under other sources thank you